All right, let's do a quick demonstration of flanging. I'm going to use the click and pull method by dragging this up and down. I'm going to increase the flanging effect, increase the prevalence of the comb filtering, and I'm going to do it all by hand using vocals. Hello. How does, How does this sound? Do you, do you hear, hear flanging? flanging? It's, it's just, just a light, light coursing, coursing effect. Um, it's, it's, I, I wish I could, I could sing. sing. There's, There's a, a lot, lot of latency. latency. Without, Without ASIO. 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 So for me, I like to use that in weird ways, right? To transform, I do electroacoustic, like spoken word stuff. So if I do a Shakespeare sonnet and I want to like accent a word, that'd be kind of cool to map that function anyways to a ribbon controller, um, ribbon strip controller, or I guess anything you want to use to control a parameter value. I like the visualization as well. I think that is a part of it. I want my plugins to be something that you leave open while you play them. It's an instrument as well as a studio tool, but it can be an instrument. Um, I perform with Ableton, so that's where that comes from. I use projectors sometimes, so it'd be easy to pop this up on a projector. Don't know what to do about this uh, white thing on top yet. Um, I think there's like a window setting to change that, but I'll figure that out anyway. So that's a basic intro to the point and click method of flanger. That's a little bit more gimmicky. Really, it's more about the LFOs, but sometimes it can be kind of fun to record it uh, actually like a flanger, especially if you don't know how a flanger works. This is a good way to visualize it. Okay, for this video, I'm going to do some weird vocal effects. So just listen to them with, uh, I'm going to use flanger for it. All right, just listen. compared to the wet or the dry rather might be a cool way to add a little bit of dysfunction in it but really you could find something fun to do with this So, I mean, I always think of things for sound design tools first because that's just more fun. This plugin visualizes the effect of flanging, the effect of pressing down and the comb filtering that results because of it, like so. So, as you can see, as I push down more, the comb filtering becomes more pronounced and it's visualized as such. But let's hear it. Let's do a uh, dry first. That's got some uh, reverb on it. Let's hear it now with some flanging. Uh, more so, I use this as a shimmer or chorus effect. Uh, I turn on my LFO, turn up my LFO depth, play with the rate a little bit, and I'll modify both of these at the same time. Let's hear it now. Okay, I like that. It is pitch shifting a little bit more than I'd want, so I'm actually gonna make the rate slower. Keep that depth up. Let's go again. Let's 
Let's go with no flanger just to hear it. So we can hear it's a it's still a nice clear sound, but if we wanted to get a chorus, the very short tail shimmer effect, flanger can be very effective at that. And maybe let's play with this feedback a little bit. That can be a very pronounced effect if you want a wider lead, a thicker sound. Let's go up high now. Let's go without the flanger, without reflections. That is my reverb as well. It's here to up high. Kind of a cool, funky sound. Let's put reflections on it. So now it's sounding, you know, like reverberant. Now we're going to get to a synth lead with the flanger on. So we're just going to go ahead and make this Rhodes chord progression sound like total gaslight, male manipulator, vaporwave, indie, whatever garbage thing. Sorry, I'm going to use flanger and reflections. Get both these plugins free. All right, so here's the chord progression. All right, now let's hear it with a little bit of flanging. It's a little bit darker than what I'm going for. This needs to be more like self-piteous and stuff. So what I'm going to do is add uh, some reverb. Um, probably play it a little bit faster, all right? There you have it. So let's hear it dry one more time, just for comparison. This is dry. Alrighty, now we're going to look at flanger and reflections with a just stock Ableton clip I got off their website. It's kind of a funky little groove here. Let's listen to it. A little loud. Okay, pretty nice. Now, listen, when I add in flanger, pretty subtle. Let's hear it. So that's just flanger. So it gets kind of buzzy. You can hear it shifting as it goes up and down. It just adds a little bit of variation. And normally you wouldn't necessarily use a drum track that's so loopy. You know, it would have a little bit of variation and stuff. Um, I started to get a little bit more funky with it too. So let's hear it now with this. Because first of all, like this is just a nice little thing like dusting on top, right? Okay, it's pretty good. Moderate LFO speed, um, just some coloration. You can hear it would kind of uh, play with the precision a little bit, but not to a, like in a consistent way. So it kind of thickens it up. Doesn't really sound good on its own, but when you hear it with the actual dry track, that's really punchy and clear.
So maybe you could even use the Ableton modulators to just turn it up on like every third beat or something. It would be a way, one of the ways to approach that goal. And this kind of creates it in a more smooth approach, like the, through the synchronization or desynchronization of the phase of these LFOs of the modifying the delay times rather than just applying a swing to it through like Ableton Groove Pool. Um, but anyway, so I started then doing it, and this makes me want to now think I should do a rhythmic uh, link thing. I already have the technology. Um, oh, no, before I do that, I got to show you with uh, reflections as well. So let's turn on reflections and hear it. And you can see in reflections, pretty small. That's normally what I do for drums anyways. And it is the verb sending to the delay. Oh. Well, that's not right. There we go. Huh. Never mind on that. Synchronize delay times. Right. Okay, now let's get to flanger getting weird when I go to LFO. So I'm going to layer it in just kind of quietly. Take down that depth and the feedback. That's kind of fun. Let's go to FM. Let's get weird. to get it just right there's so many things causing the sounds we're hearing So uh, that gives me ideas about where I want to go with this as I keep working. Um, yeah, we'll experiment with this. Show me what kind of weird crap you can make. Reclusaudio.com. Get it for free. Just give me your email. It's worth it. All right. Now we are rigged up with Pulsar, and we're going to run that through Flanger. So as you see, I got Pulsar open above me. If you don't know, now you know. I'm just pressing down the pedal. It's generating pulsarets, which carry, or essentially it's an impulse train, right? But instead of an infinite bandwidth impulse, it is a wave shape from a wave table. Wave tables like serum or massive, you can interpolate through vectors of them, and they get different colored spectra for different wave shapes, right? Well, also then it introduces all of the microsonic compositional techniques for shaping sound, the envelope of it, the envelope of the train itself, the spectra, the formant frequency, the pitch shifting applied to that pulsarette, that formant uh, creates a different formant. So it is precision control of formant frequencies. Like you can get around like 400 frequencies and like kind of isolate it at negative 24 dB per octave. This is exactly that, right? But I should say, I mean, Affected also by the spectra, too, but let's go to this. Right, so this is Pulsar. You should know what this is by now. Come on. But uh, let's do Pulsar with Flanger, and it has interesting results. Um, so let's get a little pulse, uh, a little Flanger setting custom for Pulsar. I think last night I was doing... Let's try it with Ultra High first. Let's just dive right in. That's what we want to see. Because it's already so rapid and fast, and it's kind of like putting the waves in the sand, this being the waves and that pulsar being the sand. And this always surprises me. It's not that, oh, that's why. Oh, let's, uh, I'm actually going to turn off reflections for this too.
All right. So that's a pretty decent setting. And it's like, oh, it's okay. That's pretty cool. But to really hear it, we need to um, add in some trajectories to uh, Pulsar. Oh, that's pretty good. All right, now I'm going to add some stochasticism of the panning position, and I'm just going to ride that a little bit. All right, let's put in some different uh, randomized pulsarette frequencies. Okay, I'm starting to like it. Let's try it without flanger. I mean, that's pretty nice, too. I think um, I should put reflections before flanger this time. So let's hear it with reflections. Yes, okay, that's that classic sound that we live for. Cave raindrops. That's one of the signature sounds of pulsar and reflections together. So what, what I want to do is slowly increase flanger and I actually wanted to make flanger without a dry wet knob but this immediately makes me think god I wish I had a dry wet knob I'm just trying to think like differently about it because I thought well I could just have different depth but because either you're controlling the depth by dragging it out or right here let's try it lower oh or what I would need is an offset <clears throat> like to make it delayed by 20 milliseconds and then the LFO modifies the delay offset right but let's hear it like this All right, we're going to go really low. What's happening there? What the f What is happening? What? I guess when it's that... Why is it producing this different sound? I don't even know what's going on. I got to hear it without reflections real quick. So the, the high depth produces that buzzy sound like it was before without reflections. But when we have the low depth with reflections. Okay, yeah. Okay, so it's still getting that ray gun sound because it's like, uh, it still sounds like it's pitch shifting. Like you can hear the the scooping of it. Let's try it with. You know, the effect of the feedback on a flanger is always harder for me to perceive, but it's kind of haptic. It's like, I don't know what's going to happen. Anyways, let's try Pulsar with ultra low mode now, right? Let's crank that depth up. Big boy style. Big person style. Hell yeah. What is the way? That's a tasty sound right there. Okay, let's get back into Pulsar now, and we can play around with this fundamental. Let's go to a different wave shapes, actually. Yeah, there we go. So, hmm, let's do a longer attack. This sounds like a really good creepy crawly sound. glide go up a little bit this is pretty cool it can really make it stretch through all the formants or whatever you pass along the way and we're gonna go maybe just a little bit more width oh yeah that could be cool a little aggressive okay
intermittency up. Let's turn down the width a little bit. So when you start getting those more uh, bleep bloop sounds instead of pops and crackles is when the width is longer. The pulse red is running for multiple cycles rather than just one. So it invokes a, uh, it sounds more like that is actually the pitch going on rather than just the spectra of the fundamental frequency. Um, so that is a little bit of flanger with pulsar. You can get all these plugins for free, recluseaudio.com, at the cost of an email email address. I, I won't spam you, I promise. Just getting you on my mailing list. I'll send you like one a month just saying, hey, I got something new. And I, I really want to make this my living. So if you do pay for it, it would be greatly appreciated as well. Um, but get on now while it's still cheap before I start selling a lot because I won't always give them away totally for free just for the price of an email, right? Uh, so hop on, use them, become a dedicated customer, I'll hook you up with plugins in the future. All right. Bye. All right, so I have this funky sort of 8-bit sounding analog synth type uh, preset from Ableton, and I'm going to use my plugins Reflection and Flanger to make it into an epic synth lead. So let's hear the dry signal first, right? Kind of like it. It's got a nice... um buzzy formant sound to it like a high resolution uh wah filter that goes really fast i guess but i wanted to be more epic so the first thing i'm going to do is turn up the release on that sorry you can't see this um uh, ableton default dual osc buzz octaves bass uh dual oscillator um let's hear it now with a longer release Okay, that will be more pronounced now when I turn on the flanger. As you can see, I have it set up. I wonder why. I think I need to turn the volume. There we go. So we got it oscillating on its own right now. I have a moderate amount of feedback. Not too deep, not too fast. It's an ultra low mode. This is how I'd mostly use it if I want the synth lead. If you get to LFO, it can sound uh, more rhythmic. If you get to FM, I mean, it sounds like frequency. It sounds like uh, microsound, uh, noise-based. Like, you can do really tasteful noise, color to spectra with the input. Uh, anyways, um, let's hear this now. Okay, I kind of like that. Now, I actually think I'm going to turn up the glide time as well. Um, let's hear how this sounds. Maybe too much. Yeah, see, the What's this? Uh, what does Legato do again? Oh, oh, let's turn off Legato. Let's hear how this sounds. That's what I was wanting. Okay, so legato is, it only connects them if you play the next note while the previous one was down. So I guess if I had better skills, I could use that. But I turned it off, did what I wanted. Uh, in fact, I'll maybe even turn it back down now. Okay, anyway, so let's put fl uh, flanger to work a little bit more. And we're going to now turn on reflections, which is not the focus of this video. But I will uh, just show you real quick here. Hello. Uh, if you're wondering about the weird aspect ratio and stuff this is i'm just doing one shot for tiktok and youtube so widescreen and vertical um and i'm going to cut myself in this frame it works pretty well uh although i probably well anyways um so anyways this is reflections here it can go from uh, a delay on the left side a delay processor and then a reverb processor on the right side right so it's kind of like two plugins in one and that's cool and this is maybe you just want a little bit of the dry input like it's basically the input gain and input gain for the uh, reverb, right? Output gain, output gain. That's pretty straightforward. Now, here's where it gets cool. This offers the option to 
I just want to make sure you can see it. I can send the delay output over to the reverb. And you can send the reverb output to the delay. So the delay goes to the reverb, reverb goes to the delay, blah, 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 keeps going back and forth. And because it does feedback like that, um, and it's at like a, a fixed delay time with shorter delays, you really get pronounced comb filtering anyways. Kind of check out Elvin Lucier, I'm sitting in a room. That's basically what happens. Um, if you don't know that piece, it's really cool. He sits in a room and he says his speech and then it reverberates through the room through loudspeakers. It's recorded again. And each time it goes through that feedback loop, it is picking up on the artifacts and the details of that room. And each room we find has different resonant frequencies and not just resonant frequencies, but like re resonant spectra, its own color of uh, resonance, right? So this kind of, I, in fact, that wasn't even, I, I made this because I always set this up. You can, you don't need this plugin to do it. It just makes it easier. It's kind of nice to look at, has some freeze function and cool stuff. Um, you can do this with buses though, delay bus or FX loops, if you call it that. Delay bus, reverb bus, and then they send to each other. Um, be careful, this baby gets hot, right? Um, meaning you can have infinite feedback loops where you crush your ears or something. Uh, so anyways, that's a little introduction to reflections if you don't know what it is. Um, I'm going to leave the default settings there and we'll keep playing. All right. So I'm thinking about adding in different wave shapes because I can hear it go as it like hits the peak of that sign, different wave shapes for the um, LFO. Uh, but in the meantime, let's go ahead and, as you see, it modifies on top of my effect. I did that to get them a little bit out of phase, uh, but it looks like they're still in phase. So let's mess with the rate a little bit here. There we go. So you see it speeds up and slows down. The LFO is changing the um, delay time. It's modifying it. All right, let's go faster, but with a slower, a lower depth. Maybe I went really slow with a giant depth. Whoa, slow down there, buddy. Shit, I forgot how it ends. Anyways, getting feeling myself now. It can really transform it from a snippy little funky sound, like quick refresher. Here's what it sounds like without it, right? I don't know why I insist on using the pitch bend for that. Sounds kind of cute. I like it. And there's actually a little wimp wimp. Uh, there's a kind of cool quality to that. Is this an instrument rack or just the... Yeah, it's just the instrument. That's impressive. How are they... Yeah, uh, the envelopes on this are, are really well crafted. Um, it's a great instrument on its own. Uh, it's, um, but when you add in the other stuff, I mean, come on. It's just a fat lead now. And remember, maybe we could do even less reflections too, just a touch of it. Let's try reflections after, huh? 
Let's see what that sounds like. And we'll put it at 50 again. I'm going to do a shorter delay on reflections this time. Let's see what that sounds like, huh? I'm making the room size larger on reflections. Here, I'll uh, drop that in there. So I changed my delays down. They were at about 600. Room size went up to 0 0.81. I mean, scale it however you want. I don't know what that relates to in meters, but... This is free right now. I mean, for the price of an email. Otherwise, honestly, seriously, I'm asking you to buy it as a favor to invest in me. So I cannot get another job to slow me down. I'll make you more plugins, right? Works out for both of us. Uh, but I know everybody has dreams of their own. Hope I can support yours too. Um, but in the meantime, though, if you drop your email, I don't spam. I don't sell the data. I just will advertise plugins to you like, once a month maybe right i'm not going to abuse it won't sell it i just need um something to you know be building up right um and uh, please reach out if you have ideas for plugins i always love hearing it if you want to commission plugins i do that as well um we can discuss payment structures are different for everybody uh yeah Give me your feedback. Download this, use it, find bugs. Tell me, hey, this thing doesn't work. I wish it did this. That would be really cool. I could make adjustments. I'd love it. All right.